what did they look like or feel like? Like when you, just a, your everyday average spirit when you're a kid and they're in your bed with you and all of that. <laughs> well, the one in my like bed. Leprechauns or what you would imagine a spirit would look like. So know, there were different types of spirits. So there were spirits um, that were smaller, like elves, almost like small, tiny, that would climb up on my bed, you know, and hold my nose and try to stop me from breathing. Um, those were, and they like would mischievously or, or mischievously, like, like a, okay, mischievously, like right? no, like mischievously. Then there were ones that were horrific. There was one who was so tall that he had to squeeze his body into my door and he would open the door and push the door open and squeeze his big body in. And he had a lot of anger and rage. And then there were ones who looked like just normal people, but were just super angelic and um, young. They were young faced and they were so sweet and kind. And then there were ones that had like glowing, like look like octopuses or um, jellyfish with eyes all around them. And they called themselves archangels. Um, and then they would sometimes project themselves looking like humans with wings. And I asked them why, and they told me it was because they don't, human beings can't handle what they really look like. So they take on the form that's most, most ease for a person's consciousness. Um, then there were ones who were like, um, taking on the shapes and forms of things that I was scared of. There were shapeshifters. Like if I was afraid of Freddy Krueger, they would come as Freddy Krueger. If I was afraid of, I used to call the boogeyman, you know, then they would hang out and look like the boogeyman until I figured out later through my training that they are taking on the shapes of my fears. Mm -hmm. And so there were all kinds. And then there were some that were just pure energy and pure, just pure sunlight, just like, radiating light, warmth. I could feel the warmth in my heart when they were in the room. And I would feel this warm sensation in the center of my chest. And I and then I would see this, this glowing energy moving like this. And then some of them were ancestors who looked just like they were, but younger. And they would come in and talk to me. Was there a certain time of the night where you would encounter these spirits? Yeah, so the time was always around uh, 12 and two o'clock. So you would just naturally kind of wake up around then and just like, okay, what's about to happen? <laughs> what's about to happen now? Well, I was always afraid of going to sleep in my bed because of the woman. Mm -hmm. So my father got rid of my bed. And even to this day, I don't sleep in a bed unless I'm with my fiance. I sleep on a couch so that I can feel that there's a backing. Yeah, like the couch you see me on right now, this is where I sleep every night because this is what makes me feel comfortable. I don't like when spirits sit in the bed with me and my bed goes down on one side, I don't like dealing with that. So when I'm with my fiance, I sleep in the bed with her. But when I'm at a hotel, like any place else, if my hotel, I'll sleep in a hotel, but I'll pack a bunch of pillows on one side of my body because I still don't like that feeling. But yes, um, my father got rid of my bed and gave me a couch. So I lived on a, I slept on a couch for all my childhood. So I lived in this house in Venice, California for about six or seven years and uh, someone, came to the house once um, for some meditation stuff that I was doing. And she, we did a couple meditations and she said, you know, your house is inhabited by entities, by spirits. And oddly enough, I'd been hearing noises and lots, like too many cracks and creaks to just, to just say, oh, that's just the house settling. There was like something else going on. And it started to intensify after I had that conversation with her. And then I, very deliberately like saged my house. And then I had a conversation with my grandmother who was no longer in her body. And I just said, Hey, I, I need you to protect me um, from wh whatever's in here. Cause it just doesn't make me feel that comfortable. And after I had my own little makeshift ceremony, right. My exorcism ceremony, I didn't have any more of the um, spirit stuff. And, and one instance I really, I still remember to this day because it was so, crazy. I was in the bed with my girlfriend who was living with me at the time. And, uh, and we were both, we weren't light sleepers, but we would know if someone had gotten up to go to the bathroom or whatever. And I had, we both had side tables and on my side table, I had a bottle of water and I had a, there was a nice size lamp. 
And um, the next morning, we're talking, we're like cuddling and stuff. And then I turn to get out of the bed and I see my lamp is sitting on the floor. Like, like somebody had like lifted it up because the, the cord wasn't that long. So if I had accidentally knocked it over, it, I would have heard that or it would have been on its side or, but it looked like someone had lifted it up and just gently placed it on the floor. And that was before the whole exorcism thing that I experienced. If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. Click this thumbnail right here and I'll see you over there.